Thank you. Good morning and welcome. That was good. Yeah, I, I'm excited to be here and get this launch event started. I have to share, as an outsider, I, I feel a real sense of privilege being a part of this event. I'm fortunate in the work that I do to have an opportunity to travel across the country and work with category leading brands like Motorola on their live events. I do about 75 live events a year. And when I heard about how this event was coming together, I really pressed for the opportunity to be involved because this morning represents so much of what I evangelize, which is listening to customers anticipating their needs and bringing solutions to the marketplace that solve real business challenges. This morning is about leadership, it's about innovation, it certainly is about technology, but perhaps more than anything, it's about a refusal to accept the status quo. And I think it's gonna be fun to look back a year from now and be able to say, hey, I was, I was a part of that. I participated in that event. And, and just one thought around participation. I know we've got our phones on airplane mode in the room. Uh, we've got a lot of people that are participating remotely via the web. And, and I want to encourage those that are, feel free to follow along and share your thoughts. We've got a, a hashtag on Twitter reserved for this. It's pound TC70, so we can create some real good back channel dialogue and conversation around the web while we're here for the next hour. I appreciate your attention. I appreciate your enthusiasm. I'm gonna be back in a few minutes to share some additional thoughts and outside perspective with you. But to get us started, I'm going to turn it over now to a familiar voice, the leader of your enterprise business, Mr. Girish Rishi. Thank you. Thanks, Ryan. Good morning, New York. What a celebration. Look at, look at this. Look at this facility. What a celebration. Just coming up here, a couple of minutes ago, I asked Mike Peterson from our marketing department. How many people are in the room? And he said, Girish, there are over 3,000 people dialed in from all over the world, piping into the session. So I welcome you all. I welcome our customers, our partners, analysts, and everybody from our community who's dialing into this awesome event we are ha having here. I'm in New York. I'm speaking to you from the New York Design Center. And I want to share a story with you. I was a 24-year-old product manager when I walked into this building, and I saw a big wall there, the Hall of Fame. We also call it the Wall of Patents. And this morning, while coming down to the atrium for this event, I stopped by that Hall of Patents Wall of Fame, and I tried to touch the patents. One of the original patents is in 1981. It's a living, breathing wall. It's a living, breathing wall where our team of engineers worldwide and our development teams and our enterprise team, go-to-market team, they come up with great ideas, looking at use cases of our customers as changes are happening and we innovate and we patent them. I love that wall, that hall of uh, fame, that wall of patents there. It's just a few steps away from here. So I wanna welcome all of you. I wanna say good morning to everybody here. Good evening for, for those who are dialing from other time zones. I have three things I want to talk to you about. The first one is consumer devices. You love consumer devices, I love consumer devices, I use one like you. And our customers like the feel of a consumer device. The gesture control, the sleekness, the user interface. Our users have told us that they don't require any training when they use a con consumer device, when they use it for their personal purposes. Now, we have a little bit of experience with consumer devices or consumer platforms. More than 15 years ago, we were the first company to embrace the Palm operating system, and we introduced products with the Palm OS, and it was hugely successful. We followed on, we embraced Windows Mobile, 
when HP iPad came out. And then we saw the advent of the iPhone culture starting in 2007. So folks, anybody here, or those dialing in, in segments of our business, we are running towards consumerization. We are not running away from consumerization. But we do it with our customers and use cases in mind. We embrace consumer platforms with enterprise, enterprise, enterprise applications in mind. We take the best of what consumer markets have to offer. We were the first one in this industry to introduce an Android operating system based product. Now we have seven offerings out there being used by our customers. Palm, HP iPack, Android, we've been the first ones out there embracing the best building blocks for many reasons. The biggest one being user experience. Our customers want to use things that are intuitive. We have an awesome industrial design team. They study the ergonomics, they study the user interface. We build on top of uh, Android. And it's not just about the operating system, it's the sensors that our data capture team and our wireless team that brings into it. It's the experience, the power of the enterprise, the feel that you can use this device over long days as a mobile worker, perhaps in a truck in Arizona in the summer months, or in a, another vehicle in Minneapolis in the winter months. So how you take, how our development teams take the best that consumer platforms have to offer, and they sculpt and architect offerings, software, hardware, user experience offerings, is what we are all about. We are all about our use cases uh, for our customers. So it's a consumer plus enterprise that equals optimized experience for our customers. And today's launch is all about that. That was the first point. The second point is, I've asked people, the experts who keep a chronology, and the fact is, there has never been a moment like this, never been a moment like this in over 30 years of our business. When we are launching a device, when we are launching a device and there are tens of thousands of that offering being used today by our customers. Think about it. You, you know, developing teams launch a product, the product goes out, people port their applications, and over the course of time you see a RAM. This is such a unique offering, our seventh Android optimized MX experience for voice, data, sensors, ergonomics, power of the enterprise in their hands that few customers came to us and they said, we need it now, we are increasing our ramp and we wanna be out there before Thanksgiving with our mobile workers using this product. Very important point, what we are launching today, out of the gate, tens of thousands of customers and end users are using this product. Now my third point, we are seeing change everywhere. How a retail store is changing in the front what the warehouse picker is doing, what the truck driver is doing as he or she is delivering a package or taking an inventory uh, uh, list at, uh, at, a, at a shopping mart to deliver goods for the next day or for that Saturday. On the manufacturing uh, floor, we are seeing a digital manufacturing methodology starting to emerge where preventive maintenance and quality of operation is a totally different paradigm. There's change happening at the, at the bedside when nurses and doctors are working. There's change happening everywhere. And today's launch is responding to those changes, responding to our customers and equipping them, not with a mobile computer. Anybody who can build a mobile computer, any part of the world. It's by creating an experience that delivers you voice experience, voice telephony experience in a Wi-Fi environment, not on cellular, but in a Wi-Fi environment that is secure, that is reliable, where the quality of service, service is just awesome. The data capture experience of it, the ruggedization, the security, the manageability. So all those ingredients, our secret sauce that we learn, not totally in our labs, but at the customer's docks, in trucks, on manufacturing floors. All those use cases get incorporated into this phenomenal, this awesome product launch we are about to make happen. Can you tell I'm excited? <laughs> I'm excited. 
You know something? I'm also very humble and very proud. Many folks here and around the world get to design and develop this product. They get to put, put their fingerprints on it. I get to launch it, and it's a privilege. I'm excited to announce, to introduce, the Symbol TC70. So, TC70 realizes the applause that you just gave it. I have one word for this product, guys. I've been using it. And I was sitting in a session next to Joe White, and I was using it, and I was looking at him. I'm like, this is, this is amazing. I have one word for it. This is a magnificent device. It's a magnificent device. The symbol TC70. The symbol TC70. The symbol TC70. We are also at a, at a, at a very important time. Our long-standing partner, Zebra Technologies, as you know, has decided to acquire us. We are hours, days away from becoming one company. Zebra and the original symbol, Motorola Enterprise Team, we shall be one entity. The innovators coming out of Zebra, our customer outreach folks coming out of Zebra, and the same from the symbol, Motorola Enterprise Team, we will finally be, after talking about it for more than 20 years, we'll be one team. And are we excited about that combination coming through? And, and, and as we talk to Anders Gustafsson, who's the CEO at Zebra and their management team, about this transition we are going through from Motorola Enterprise to becoming part of Zebra, we deliberated upon what to name the product. And the answer was very obvious. Name it Symbol. That's what our customers know it by. Customers equate Symbol to enterprise mobility. Symbol, symbol equals enterprise uh, uh, mobility. It equals innovation. When you ask customers who've dealt with us, they say, hmm, symbol, innovation, and reliability. Innovation and reliability. So folks, it's the most advanced, it's the most toughest, most capable offering that our team here, influenced and developed by all over the world, has been created. I can't, see to see, I can't wait to see customers in retail, manufacturing, transportation, logistics, healthcare, and many sectors embrace and use this device. Let me stop talking now, and let's watch this video. most important jobs in the world are the ones we never even think about. When so much depends on what you do, the right device makes all the difference. Introducing the Symbol TC70, empowering the workers that power our world. The Symbol TC70. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome leader of mobile computing, Joe White, and from our marketing organization, Mike Peterson. Good morning, everybody. To be successful in any business, you have to focus on the end user. And we've been doing that for decades. But as I'm surrounded by all the engineers and product experts, we often transpose those to features and solutions and specifications 
But we've also come to realize that it's the users and the people on the front line of these organizations that really make businesses work. They're the heart of logistics. They're the muscle behind operations. They're the face of retailers and they're the hands of manufacturing. And we all recognize in this world, life can sometimes be hard. Right? It takes double incomes to make ends meet and sometimes even double shifts. So as we stand up here and pontificate about TCO and ROI and productivity and net business impact for the people on the front line, they make sacrifices every day to provide for their family and for their children. And we want to take a moment and celebrate so many of those unsung heroes. Now the TC70 is one of the most advanced Android devices that we've ever built. We've been working in conjunction with our partners so that there's over 50 certified industrial grade applications ready for deployment and that list continues to grow. Now if you listen to the broader discussion in technology, it's really about two things. It's called bimodal strategy. We need to focus on not only the rock, of delivering what customers have come to expect from us from lo for a long time, but also fluidity and being able to adapt to this widely ranging and advancing ecosystem that we live in of mobility and information and sensor technology. And I'm going to show you how the TC70 delivers against both. So before we get into talking about TC70, which it's an exciting device, and wow, what a crowd we have here today. This is a rare event, and we're streaming it live around the world. There are thousands of people watching this in all time zones, many of which helped create the device, some of which are buyers of the device, others are resellers. We wanted to take a minute and take a poll of the audience, a real-time poll uh, at a live event, and those people online get the advantage of actually voting on the poll. The question is, what OS are you predominantly using for your next enterprise mobility rollout? There are, there are three options here. You got Android, whether it be Jelly Bean, Kit Kat, whatever flavor's coming, coming next, Windows, or a combination of both. While that poll is being tallied, let me just give you a stat. This year, we're going to see Android growth in our portfolio over 400% year on year. Significant growth. So this is uh, our seventh device that we're putting out in the market. It's an exciting time. Let's see what the poll says in terms of results here. Submit. Survey says. Survey Super, says. Can you, uh, Super, can you flip that slide? There we go. There we are. So no surprise, 40% of our, our respondents said Android will be the next device, while 33% said a combination of Android and Windows. That transition's happening, it's happening today. And we're here to announce the TC70 because that's 100% commitment to responding to our customers. Our customers asked for this and we're delivering it. This is the first mobile computing device that we're going to put out on KitKat operating system, first of many. Um, it's not just the operating system. In addition to the operating system, we've launched the latest release of MX. What is MX? MX allows our devices to be secure, manageable, gives developers access to peripherals and capabilities on the device not available in standard uh, consumer grade Android. The second thing that I want to highlight about TC70 is scanning. Much of our customers' use cases evolve around, revolve around scanning. The video showed that. The scanner in the TC70 is the SE4750. It's our latest generation world class 2D imager. This, this, this scanning device can scan 40% faster than the prior imager, 2D imager that we had in here. The, the, the imager that's built into here can operate at 50% greater range 
It actually has fuzzy logic to decode even the toughest barcodes that are dirty, smeared, or messed up. So all around, this is a world-class scanning device. In fact, let's take a look at scanning on a TC70 versus prior devices or consumer devices. You can look at the stats on the screen. It is a superior device, and it will deliver better pro productivity into your operations in the enterprise. Fast, accurate, and reliable. TC70. Let's switch gears a little bit and talk about the display of the product. It's based on a 4.7 inch display, and I'm sure it's not lost on most of you that that's the same size as the new iPhone 6. It's not lost on us that when they launched their 4.7 inch device, they hired U2 to play live on stage, and they gave away 500 million free albums. To launch our device in the 4.7 inch category, we hired the Rolling Stones to play for you on stage later today. <laughs> Unfortunately, Mick Jagger called last night. He does have a touch of laryngitis and they uh, did have to cancel. But what we do have that the Apple doesn't have, nor does Samsung, nor does HTC, nor does Nokia, nor does Pydia, nor does Honeywell, is our intelligent display technology. And what is intelligent display? It works like a normal interactive capacitive touch screen with your finger. However, when you want to switch to a glove or a stylus, it'll automatically detect that change and adapt instantly and immediately. Now, frankly, most products just don't work with a glove at all. And for those that do, they have to be manually adjusted. This may sound like a very small detail, but imagine standing on the loading dock in that Minneapolis area that Girish mentioned, and it's 30 below, and the wind is blowing in, and you're trying to use the device, and you have a glove on, and you have to take your glove off to put it on, and then change the device, or leave your glove in your pocket, and you're not quite sure. And it sounds like a potential case of frostbite. We certainly know that it's inconvenient. And so the device is designed to bring convenience to real-world applications. Likewise, the device works equally well if it's wet or if it's dry, and I would challenge you to do that test on any other product. All of this makes it easier to interact with the large screen device and make it work for you and your customers. So we know that the world of sensors, Internet of Things, it's on the headlines everywhere. And make no mistake, we've integrated sensing technology into this beyond barcode scanning. TC70 comes with the latest in near-field communication technology, NFC, enabling a whole new set of use cases for our customers. I was talking to an engineer earlier today about the NFC. We've enabled APIs to allow you to fully control the performance, the battery life, and all the capability out of this device with NFC. This will deliver Identity validation, so automatic authentication to a device for login capability with a smart badge. It'll enable our customers to start monitoring equipment. Imagine talking to a device knowing when it was built, when it was manufactured, when was it last used, who serviced it last. NFC technology will enable those use cases for our customers. There's another capability that we've built into this device, talking about sensing and uh, uh, Internet of Things. Payment. Payment is a use case that we've seen emerging amongst many of our uh, retail customers. In fact, if, if you look at the stats over the next two years, there'll be 20 billion credit cards issued in the world today. That's three credit cards for every living person. Credit is not going away. And that's why we integrated MagStripe reading payment capability for North America at the launch of this product. Um, we will be extending that pay payment capability to also include chip and pin in the first half of 2015. Thanks, Joe. Now, I want to do one more online poll very quickly, and I think it goes to the heart of why the TC70 has so much potential in the retail sector. And for those of you online participating, I want you to think about your own personal shopping experiences, 
not your expertise in retail or what, what your customers tell you, but your personal experiences in the retail sector. And take a look at this quiz. From your own shopping experiences, when you finished or when you needed customer service or associate assistance, how satisfied were you with their availability and support? Were you fully satisfied? Were you generally satisfied? Were you generally unsatisfied? Or are you rarely satisfied? So hit the radio button on your PC and then let's, Supra, if we can show the results of that survey in real time here. You can flip this slide to the results of the survey. Technology is great, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> there we go. Well, 1.7% um, of you said you were fully satisfied. 41% said generally satisfied, and over half of you said you were generally unsatisfied or rarely satisfied. That actually correlates fairly well to a study that we did earlier this year. And in that survey, it said that less than 25% of the people out there are actually fully uh, are happy with their customer service and availability. But more importantly, that survey said that those people, 50% uh, of them said they would buy 50% more product if they had good customer service and support. In other words, half of them said that they would buy 50% more if you just serviced them properly in the store. So if you're a retailer and you're trying to move more goods, what a huge opportunity that is in front of you. And so I want to show you how the TC70 can actually improve the outlook for retailers and capitalize on this important point. So let me show you. First of all, you've probably heard that this year has been called the year of the selfie. And as you can see, Joe has always been into selfies. So while Joe is uh, texting and tweeting his selfie away, um, the TC70 does work very well for, seven, uh, for selfies. But more importantly, there's an 8 megapixel camera on the back. And the 8 megapixel camera is really important in the retail sector because it's great for proof of condition, videos for training, equipment repair. And we all know, and we've heard this since we've been very young, a picture is worth a thousand words. On the front of the device, the camera is really optimized for video calls. That's a great way to add a personal touch for customer interaction or really efficient issue resolution. Now, most of us in this room and online probably have kids or have had kids. And if you have, if you look at the younger generation, their communication modes are rapidly changing. Instant messaging, texting, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, right? You would think that actually talking on a phone is going out of style with some of these individuals. But the fact of the matter, in business communications, voice is not going away. It's still the foundation of our communication. It's going to be that way for a long time. It's fast. It's efficient. Obviously, it's very natural for the same reason that we're talking here today. So with that, we asked ourselves, how can we make voice communications even better with the TC70? First, every product comes pre-installed with Workforce Connect PTT Express, or Push to Talk Express along with a dedicated button on the side. With that, right out of the box, it works like a two-way radio. So for instance, if I was in a retail setting, I could. Joe, we have a gentleman who needs some help in gas grills. Can you give them some support? I've known Joe for a long time, and the one thing I've learned is he really loves it when the marketing guys give him an assignment. So it allows the individual in the store to have real-time communication and get rid of that walkie-talkie that they're carrying on their hip. And it's all free, and it works on your existing Wi-Fi network. Now, that demo might be pretty easy if you're inside a retailer. It's not so easy if you're inside a manufacturing facility. And imagine trying to build that gas grill, and there's a foundry, and there's fans, and there's a big press, and there's conveyor belts, and there's machinery, and there's forklifts, and the ambient noise level is a heck of a lot higher. Then that is a more difficult challenge. So for that reason, on the front of the product, it actually has three independent microphones with some advanced algorithms. So it filters out all the ambient noise, and it only picks up what's being spoken. On the other end is a speaker that actually 
has a maximum volume of about 108 dB. Now, for those of you not familiar with dB, that's equivalent to a passing subway at about three meters. It's four times louder than the average smartphone. All of this making it possible so when you're communicating with Workforce Connect push to talk, that both people, both the user on one end and the user on the other end can easily hear and be heard. By the way, that was my first selfie ever. Um, so, <laughs> so clearly I need some practice at it. Um, um, I also need, you know, one of those Facetune apps to actually tune it up a little. Um, so beyond the voice capability, um, TC70, our engineers sweated every single detail about this product. Foundational to any of our field mobility products, our customers ask for number one is battery life. Battery life is critical out in the field. We put inside the TC70 a 4,620 milliamp hour battery. This is two to three X the battery life that you would get out of your smartphone, your consumer device. This battery life allows our users to drive more productivity in their operations and use our devices longer. In addition to that, again, sweating the details, with TC70, we have a removable battery. And we designed the hinges, the capability, and the battery pack so that you could be recharging a spare in the back of your operations. And it is one of the best removable battery products we have built and released. In addition to that, if that's not enough around battery, we built Power Precision Plus into the battery on TC70. Power Precision is our technology to allow you to remotely, through the APIs, monitor the health of the batteries, the state of the batteries, know when, with your whole population of users, when you have to replace those batteries. So this saves our customers money, and it keeps them productive out in the workforce. The second thing that we build our devices around that's foundational is durability. Durability is something our customers, when they're using their devices in a real operational scenario, they use sometimes 14, 15, 16 or more hours out of the day. If you look at a postal courier scenario, they may be using during the holidays 18 hours uh, for the life. And those devices are dropped, beat, tumbled, um, falling off of shelves, falling off of ladders. This device is about as rugged as it gets, folks. This is one of the most rugged devices with the 4.7 inch display. It's phenomenal what we were able to achieve out of this device. In fact, the Khalifa Tower, I don't know if anyone's been to it or seen it. It's amazing. It looks like something out of a sci-fi action movie. This device, if, if there were stairs that went from top to bottom on the Khalifa Tower, this device could tumble down not once but twice from top to bottom. It is the world's largest building, and TC70 could survive that. And we talked about the, the display capability, about how it can work in rain or gloved use case. Well, we built this device, IP67, so it can work in rain. It can work underwater. So it'll work one meter below water. Uh, TC70 will operate. I mentioned, I mentioned how our customers use it in all kinds of use cases. Temperature is one of those very difficult use cases to put a device in, especially electronics. This device will operate minus 20C to plus 50C. So this will operate in any of the harshest conditions we can think of. Last but not least, we've integrated Gorilla Glass not only into the top of the, the face of the device to make it rugged and durable, but also to the exit windows for the scan engine. Once again, our enterprises use devices in very extreme use cases. Use cases that consumer devices just simply won't survive. 
We built the TC-70 Enterprise Rugged. We're not building it for posting on Facebook or checking the weather. We're building it for true operational use every day, falling off ladders, falling off shelves, being run over by forklifts. In addition to all that, if, it, if Rugged's not good enough for you, we offer a full service package regardless of what happens. So you can have peace of mind that this enterprise device will be there to deliver value for you. Now to make any TC70 functional in a commercial application or really turn it into a solution, you need to have the right peripherals and the accessories. And we have the whole complement of, of peripherals. Joe talked earlier about the magnetic stripe card reader. In the video, you saw the woman holding the trigger handle that you can put the device on when you have intensive scanning applications. We also have a new share cradle. The new share cradle not only holds multiple devices at once, you can install batteries directly into the share cradle so you can quickly hot swap batteries when you need to with z virtually zero charge time. And it has future proof such that future products will obviously work in the device as well. All the necessary charging cables and communication cables are also designed such that they're magnetically connected so they're easy to install and virtually impossible to break. Now, before I close, I want to remind you that um, if you want more information around the TC70 online, there's a button at the bottom that says contact us. Click it, give us some very basic information. We'll send you a free USB key that looks like a KitKat bore for Android with some TC70 information loaded on it. Or if you'd like us or one of our partners to reach out to you directly, let us know and we'll follow up with you as well. Well, I hope you've come to the conclusion that we recognize that an enterprise device details matter, especially when the TC70 becomes the lifeline to your job. But the most important jobs in the world are the ones that most of us never even think about. So when so much depends on what you do, the right device makes all the difference. Take a look at this. The most important jobs in the world are the ones we never even think about. When so much depends on what you do, the right device makes all the difference. Introducing the Symbol TC70, empowering the workers that power our world. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome back Ryan Estes. We've heard a lot about change and transformation this morning. And I actually, I actually want to share a quick personal story uh, about change. It was January of 2009, and I received a phone call that changed my life. Uh, it was the first week back to work after the holidays, and I was driving home from my office in, in, in Minneapolis um, from the ad agency that I'd, I'd worked for for 15 years, and my cell phone rang. 
And it was my boss, our CEO, calling uh, to let me know that effective Friday morning, we were going to lay off an additional 30% of our workforce. And I pulled my car off to the side of the road and felt sick to my stomach. This was the uh, fourth layoff we were having in 12 months. And 2009 was a difficult time. It was a difficult time for your business, our business, for many industries. But in, in my heart of hearts, I knew this was the wrong decision for the business. It wasn't just the economy. There was actually a deeper fundamental issue with our business. And the issue was that our customers were changing faster than we were. And it was putting a lot of challenge on a big part of our value proposition and solution. And I, I told our CEO this, John, a great relationship with him. We'd worked together for 10 years. I said, John, this is the exact opposite of what we should be doing. This is an era of digital disruption. We need to invest and evolve and meet our customers where they are. He said, Ryan, this, this isn't a discussion. The decision's been made. So at 7.30 a.m. the next morning, I effectively resigned from my position as chief strategy officer of the ad agency I'd worked for for 15 years. Now, 2009 was not a great time to quit your job, especially without a plan B. <laughs> but I just felt the better opportunity, the bigger opportunity, was to go back, reinvent myself, and return to the marketplace with solutions that were consistent with the way customers were evolving. And in the five years since, I've come to realize two things. One, by and large, I was right. Uh, the ad agency continues to run sideways. Um, meanwhile, I've been fortunate to actually double the size of my new business for three consecutive years. The second thing that I've learned that I think is very relevant to this launch event is that we're on the cusp of a much bigger transformation than the one we experienced in 2009. D different, but bigger. And that transformation is predicated upon the way customers are changing how they make buying decisions. And I think it represents a huge opportunity for companies that embrace this change and are willing to meet customers where they are. And that's, that's a big part of what today is about. It's about introducing innovation and technology it gives you an opportunity to evolve consistent with what customer expectations and needs are. And I want to I wanna expand just a bit on this idea of customer transformation, where customers are today and where they are going as we think about 2020. You think about your customers and how much they've changed over the course of the last five years. Forrester actually calls this, and we'll go back one slide, and we'll stay on the empowered customer. Forrester actually calls this the era of the customer, and their research identifies three trends that I think are very relevant to the launch event this morning. First trend is that speed and efficiency matter because customers are more busier than they've ever been. You know how busy you are in your own lives, how many of you brought a smartphone to this event? Show of hands. Okay. Think today, the average smartphone user checks that device 150 times a day. The average office worker checks email 30 times an hour. Now you know why work doesn't get done in the office. The average Facebook user checks their account 14 times a day. And most of us are working double shifts. We do, we work the eight to five shift, we go home, have dinner, spend a little time with the kids, put them to bed, and we're back on from the nine to midnight shift. Anybody familiar with the double shift? Yeah. We're, we're busy, and we're more distracted than we've ever been. The average time of human attention span today is about eight seconds, which is roughly one second less than a goldfish. <laughs> so all you marketers in the room are really, really challenged. But in, area, in an era where we're so busy and our expectations are changing so fast, speed and efficiency matter. The other, the other trend is our customers are more informed. They access to more information in their pocket. 
and it's changing the way we make buying decisions. Today, a customer is over 60% of the way into a decision before they ever walk into a retailer or come in contact with the sales organization. So we are meeting our customers in a very different place than we were five years ago. And the other significant trend out of that research is that our customers will continue to have more and more choices. The competition is just a click away. And I think that creates some stark contrast relative to the difference between what you do and how you do business. Increasingly, in the new economy, what we do is getting commoditized. It's hard to differentiate and gain an advantage as products and services become more commoditized. But there is a huge opportunity, and the real-time survey results in this room this morning indicate that there's a big opportunity to create compelling differentiation in when around how you do business. It's what I call capturing a how advantage. And the best way I know how to capture a how advantage is to be remarkable consistently. I'll give you the definition of remarkable. It's worthy of being remarked upon. So good, I can't wait to go tell somebody else about that experience. And that can have a real significant impact on a business. And I'll, I'll give you an example. How many coffee drinkers do we have in this room? I saw a long line, so I'm, I'm assuming it's a lot. So you know what, do me a favor, we'll just create some context. So everybody in the room live, and for those participating on the web, you can just kind of think to yourself. For those of you in the room live, you drink coffee when you get up, could you raise your hand and keep it up for a minute? So all the coffee, just now look around the room for a second. We've got probably 90% plus of the people in the room, and stay with me, you're hopped up on the good stuff, so leave your hand up for a second. Now, those of you with your hand raised, how many of you have purchased a beverage from Starbucks once in the last year? Please keep your hand raised, once in the last year. Okay, we lost four hands and gained eight, so I'm not exactly sure how that, <laughs> how that math works out, but, but you can put your hands down, thank you. What I just did is I unequivocally proved that 98% of the coffee drinkers in this room consume without any regard to price whatsoever. <laughs> you, you can make that grande skinny vanilla latte at home for 26 cents. They're separating you from $5. That is not rational behavior. And you know this. And they know this. They know they can't compete in the undifferentiated, commoditized, 26 cents a cup, coffee category, so they do not try. They compete in the experience economy. And they, they get really specific around the vision of their experience that's gonna be remarkable enough to separate you from $5 consistently. And I'm gonna share it with you, it's fairly compelling. The vision of the experience they have is to be the third place in your life. This place that exists between work and home, where you can go to slow down, to relax, to think creatively, to have a conversation with a friend. Because they know increasingly in those other two places, people are busy, distracted, overwhelmed, and stressed. And people will place a premium on a third place experience. But it's also interesting to consider for a minute, what does it take to deliver a third place experience consistently in a world that's changing so fast. And I've got about 30 seconds of video insights around that idea directly from Howard himself. Let's roll the first video. I've been criticized over the years for strongly believing that building shareholder value and making money is a pretty shallow goal if it's not linked to creating value for your people and giving back to the community. Starbucks' greatest strength over our 40-year history has been the relationship we have with our people. In the book, I talk about the fact that if you strongly believe in your core purpose when things were going right, then you certainly have to believe in it and depend on it when things perhaps are most challenging. I didn't want to transform the company and succeed financially 
and then wake up one day and realize somewhere along the line we lost the values, the guiding principles of the company. And so what I'm most proud of is the fact that we've returned it to record revenue and profitability and at the same time we've preserved without question the culture and values of the company. It's a simple premise. Relationships precede financial results. And that's why a big part of their focus is putting their partners in a position to be successful, be remarkable consistently. And I, I want to give you an example of this happening. And I think there's a, a real relevant insight around this story. I, I mentioned I, I live in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, but originally I'm from Cleveland, Ohio. And my mom still lives in Cleveland in the house we grew up in. She's a retired school teacher. So every year around the holidays, we all go back and we visit mom. Well, a couple of years ago, I was traveling when my schedule worked out on Christmas Eve. And uh, I thought the airport was going to be a zoo, so I got there a couple hours early. It wasn't. It wasn't crowded at all. So for me, that means Starbucks time. So I get, I get down into my terminal, Terminal D, and I see the green sign. And when I travel these days, I always wear earbuds, you know, so I'm, I'm rocking out to Coldplay. And I see the sign, I get in line, and there's one woman in front of me. And she's having a very animated conversation with the barista. I couldn't hear what she was saying, but she's kind of waving her arms, and they're both smiling and laughing. So I wasn't in a rush, but out of curiosity, it popped out my earbuds. And sure enough, you know, they're going on about their holidays and their plans and the kids and presents, and she starts to move down the line. So it's my turn to order. And I was greeted with this very warm and sincere welcome. This woman said to me, hi, my name's Lily. What's your name? I said, I'm Ryan. She said, Ryan, what can I make for you today? I said, well, I, I want a grande pumpkin spice latte. She said, you want whipped cream on that, don't you? I said, yeah, yeah, I want the whipped cream. She said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. She said, I'm going to make it extra hot, load it up with whipped cream, sprinkle a little nutmeg on top. That's how I like it. You're going to love it. I said, sounds great. She said, where are you going? I said, Cleveland. She said, are you going back to Cleveland to spend a holiday with your family? I said, yes. <laughs> now, at this point, I start looking around for the camera, right? I mean, I'm trying to get a latte at Starbucks. I'm like, and so I move down the line, and the conversation continues, and she's funny. She's asking me questions about my family and our holiday traditions. She's laughing, and I'm laughing, and she hands me my drink and says to me, Ryan, have a safe trip back to Cleveland. Go create some extraordinary memories with your family. When you come back through the Minneapolis airport, I want you to stop here and tell me all about it. <laughs> you know, so I, I get my drink, I start walking away, and I stop and I look back at this woman, and I think to myself, you know, it's, it's Christmas Eve. Most people would rather be anywhere else in the world than serving coffee in an airport. Not her. It was like she was meant to be there. And I, I couldn't help myself. I had to go back. So I did. I walked back and I said, excuse me, Lily. And you know, she jumps around. Ryan, is everything okay with the latte? Nice athletic stance. Pumpkin whipped cream. I said, no. I said, the latte is perfect. I just had to come back and ask you, what, what is your secret to making such meaningful connections over serving coffee? Well, she, she corrected me. She said, Ryan. I'm not serving coffee. I said, okay, what are you doing? <laughs> she had thought about this. She had thought about this. And what she told me was, I'm pouring happiness into people's lives. I said, you're pouring what? <laughs> like, what is pouring happiness? And I, I want to introduce you to her and her definition of pouring happiness. This is Lily Olson on Christmas Eve a couple years ago. Lily is the shift supervisor in the Terminal D Starbucks in the Minneapolis International Airport. And this is her definition of pouring happiness. She wants to be happy in her life. She wants to be around happy people. She cares about her customers. She wants them to come back. So she chooses, even on Christmas Eve, to smile, to have fun, to help people, to just be happy. I said, Lily, you are awesome. You're an awesome brand ambassador for Starbucks. You want your customers to keep coming back to Starbucks. No, Ryan. No, Ryan. I said, okay, coffee Yoda, lesson number two, please. She says, no, I, I want my customers to come back to see me 
in Terminal D. And she, she gets to really important principles of meeting customers where they are in the new economy. And the first one is, instead of just focusing on how to be successful, focus on how to be helpful. When you help customers get where they want to go today, they'll return that favor with loyalty. Optimized employees are more likely to be helpful. The other thing she understands and masters straight away is the very specific and intentional decision around how she chooses to show up, even on Christmas Eve. You know this. A lot of things happen in work and in our lives that are beyond our sphere of influence or control. She doesn't control the weather in Minneapolis. Trust me, I live there. She doesn't control what caribou does in D8. All she gets to own is how she chooses to respond to those things. Decide how you show up. You know, it's interesting. When I, when I met Lily, and she would have had no way of knowing this, but I, uh, I was pretty heavy in the heart and had a lot on my mind. My parents, both retired school teachers, married 45 years. About three months before that holiday, I got a call from mom. We got some really tough medical news about dad. Uh, it was a terminal diagnosis, and we knew we probably weren't going to have a lot of time. So I was sitting in that airport on Christmas Eve, not in the best place in the world. I will never forget that cup of coffee. When you decide to show up consistently as the best version of who you are, it gives you your best opportunity to meet people where they are. And you never know when someone needs you to be your best. Now, probably goes without saying, where do you think I buy my coffee when my flight is in Terminal A? <laughs> yes, of course. I'll show up at the airport 45 minutes early to get a little happiness sprinkled on me. <laughs> Perhaps more importantly, I told you I do 75 live events a year. How many people do you think I've told about this woman in Terminal D? <laughs> Hashtag Lily effect for those of you that are live on Twitter. Yeah, I'm, I'm an evangelist. That's important to any business in a 2014 economy, but it's also important to understand the way we connect, the way we communicate, the, the way we decide our expectations are fundamentally being transformed right now, real time, while we're sitting in this room because of technology. And we are on the tip of the iceberg with respect to that communication revolution. And that is precisely why the right device does matter. In fact, it can make all the difference in the world. And I, I want to give you a very specific example of a progressive retailer that believed in the communication revolution, and they reinvented their business around it to tremendous success. I think that these ideas will resonate. It's a short video. Let's cue it up and let it roll. I grew up in a physical world, and I speak English. The next generation is growing up in a digital world, and they speak social. Whether you're talking with customers or you're talking with employees, you have to do it on a social platform because that's the language they speak. You know, we were one of the first to customize the chatter platform. We called it Burberry Chat. I will tell you, Christopher and I chat to the entire organization once, twice a week. It gives every associate a platform also to talk back to Christopher and I. Most importantly, it has been the greatest uniter of the culture of any platform we've ever put in place. We've got this amazing platform in place. What we're starting to do now is really shift it over to the customer experience. Wherever the customer is, as soon as they say something about the Burberry brand, we should be able to hear it. So if you tweet something positive or negative, our teams around the world can pick up on that and can start having dialogue with you in real time. We've opened up what we call the store of the future. And we've got a real loyal brand following. 
So when they walk into the store and they opt in, they'll actually feel like you're walking into the website. We'll know what is in their basket online that they've saved, that they loved, or they've shared with their Facebook fans. It's the first time that a company is blurring the lines between physical and digital. Society is moving so fast. This is how customers live. They wake up with a device in their hand and life begins. And the onus is on us to change everything we do to keep pace with as fast as society is moving. The onus is on us to change everything we do to keep pace with how fast society is moving. That's why the right device does make all of the difference. And you know who understands this? You know who gets this straight away? Your future customers, this next generation. They're going to be half of the US workforce by 2020. And they communicate and decide quite differently. That's posing some challenges. I, I'm experiencing this in my own business right now. I'm not immune to this. I have two interns, Miranda and Laura. I, and I know this for a fact. If I call Miranda or Laura on their cell phone tonight while I'm traveling 5.30 or 6 o'clock, I guarantee you that call is going right into voicemail. But I'm getting a text message back 15 seconds later. What's up? <laughs> I'm, you know, I was like, what's up is answer your damn phone when I call. I'm from a different generation. And it's one thing to think that way when Miranda and Laura work for me, but what happens when Miranda and Laura are customers. They decide differently. And I will share with you what their expectations are. Five keys to think about as you launch this into the world. First of all, you have to understand millennials, their generation, they're very special, if you haven't heard. So they expect to be treated like VIPs. They demand technology and sense of urgency. This is the multitasking generation. Instant gratification, push button, they want it now, real time. Customization. They expect it their way. And they're going to be voting with their pocketbook. When you look at the size and lifetime value of a millennial customer, it's so critical to the future of your business. And I think you've done a wonderful job of launching a device that meets this customer where they are today and where they are going to be in 2020. And I've seen this play out real time. I got an opportunity to spend a few hours inside one of your beta customers and watch how they used this device and then conduct a series of informal focus group interviews following my time with them. And it was insightful. This is empowering people to meet customers where they are. I talked to one gentleman, his name was Ron, and I think, I think he summed it up best to me. He said, using this device makes me more connected, and that makes me more confident, and that enables me to do my job better. And when I do my job better, that makes all the difference in the world for our customers. So my congratulations on delivering a vice and disruptive innovation that meets customers where they are today and where they're going in the future. The right device truly does make all the difference. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome special guest, CEO, Zebra Technologies, Anders Gustafsson. Hello, what an event, what a day. This is, this, is, uh, this is truly very exciting. And thank you for giving me a chance to come and say a few words, uh, even though this is, you know, we're not quite together as a combined company yet. But yeah, this is, this is a great event. I'm very excited. But before I get into anything, let me first just say a huge thank you to Girish and the whole product team for pulling together a great, what seems like a great device, a great product. This is truly outstanding. I think the TC70 has all the, uh, all the makings of an iconic product. It's always early, early days yet, but I think it's all the makings of an iconic pro product. And I think this is a great testament to your, your culture of innovation and product leadership. 
And I think that's something we have in common. I think that both Zebra and, and, and the enterprise business, we've always had a strong you know, belief, strong foundation in innovation and product leadership. So I think this, is, this bodes well also for the future. This is something we want to we wanna nurture as we go forward. But all these accolades about you know, the product, is, this is not just from us on the inside, say. You know, most importantly, you're hearing this from, from your partners, from your end user customers. You know, they are the ones who really count. And we have great feedback from all of them, I think, so far. And I think you know, the, the team has worked so hard on, on capturing the right mix of capabilities for, for the TC70s. And it feels like this really come together really, really nicely. Now we can really enable you know, workers to have the right information, access the right information at the right time. And if you look at our combined mission for Zebra and, and the enterprise business, you know, mobility is at the heart of that. You know, this is really what we do. Well, Zebra, we do a lot of stuff around mobility, but the enterprise business, you're all about mobility. And this is one of the biggest growth trends that I can think of. And you know, together, we really can offer much broader, more significant, more comprehensive solutions for our customers. But there's two other you know, themes that I really liked with the, the TC70 that I like to highlight. First around the OSs, operating systems. You know, Motorola, you've had a long history of being very innovative around operating systems. You know, starting with Palm, then Microsoft, and now also with Android, and having, having both Microsoft and Android as, as, as in your portfolio as big parts. And, you know, look at all, all the enhancements that you've put into to this, uh, to, to, to TC70. You know, the first enterprise targeted device with KitKat. You know, that's an industry first. And all the extension around you know, makes, makes the device so much uh, more user friendly or, or suited for enterprise uh, environments like security, manageability, and the ability to in incorporate you know, industrial strength scanners. You know, all of these things really makes it for a much more unique, much, much more suitable device and solution for, for all, you know, all our end user customers. And you know, the response has been great so far. I mean, this year we heard Joe talked about the Android device shipment volumes up you know, fourfold, so I think he said. That's a, well, we like to have more of those types of growth rates, right? That's, a, that's, a, that's phenomenal. It's a long time since we've seen those kind of growth rates. So you know, the, the market has responded really favorably, really positively to all of this. The other, the other uh, um, theme here, I, th I think, is, is around, you know, already at launch, you have so many new applications available for the, for the TC70. You know, over 50 applications that are d d available on day one for the, for the device. You know, coming from all sorts of great uh, developers, great ISVs from all around the world. You know, this really helps to set, you know, create a much broader solution, you know, much more comprehensive solution. You know, the device is a great device, but the software really makes it into a solution that can be used in all sorts of environments, all sorts of use cases. And you know, I think we have a great commitment going forward to really make sure we can devel develop strong ecosystems of partners, including you know, ISVs from all over the world, you know, different hardware providers, uh, but also, last but not least, you know, our distribution partners and, uh, and value-added resellers to really make sure we can offer the broadest solution we can. So in, in, in closing, I'll say I'm, I'm, I'm you know, super excited about, about this. This is, this is you know, getting very close for us to, uh, to now be one company. Uh, so hopefully I get to come back in a not, not too distant future and uh, you know, talk to you again about, about the, uh, the combined Zebra and Motorola Enterprise business. And you know, when you think about what we can do together, I think we are very well positioned to address a number of key growth trends. You look at the whole theme around how to connect the physical world to the digital world, you know, how to enable customers to have more real-time insight into what's happening in the physical world and be able to connect that to applications. I think that's a, can we drive real value for, for, for customers, you know, much greater you know, efficiencies and productivity, but also much improved customer service levels. And all that should result in much improved business performance for our customers. So uh, you know, with that, I gotta say, you know, we're very excited. You know, I can speak to all, all my colleagues at, at, at Zebra about the combination and coming together. And this is just a phenomenal day to, to share with you and be part of this. I, you know, I wish we had been able to close a few days earlier to, be, to, to, to do this as, as a combined company, but this is great. So with that, I say thank you, and I look forward to seeing you soon again. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now be taking live questions from the audience. Please welcome your moderator, leader of the enterprise marketing team, Barry Isburner.
Okay, we've got just enough time for a few questions that have come in online. So I'd like to have uh, Girish and Joe and Ed and the team uh, join me on stage here. Thank you, Barry. Yep. So the first question a lot of people want to know is, when can I order this and when can I get my hands on it? Well, uh, we are extremely pleased to announce that starting today, uh, orders for the TC70 terminal and key accessories can be entered in our order entry systems. We're going to start shipping in November, so that's great news for everybody. You can order it on the day it's announced. It that's is. a first, I think. Indeed. There we go. Yep. Great job. <laughs> The TC70 is a wireless LAN product. Is it going to be a wide area variant of this, Joe? That's a loaded question. The answer is yes. <laughs> First half of 2015, we'll be releasing the TC75, which will have a number of wide area connectivity options. Okay. And a lot of people have asked about the Symbol brand, bringing that back. What, what's the thinking behind that, Girish? Well, very simply, we are about a week away from merging with Zebra. So we are a business in transition going to a, to a new entity. And uh, the whole idea was to reintroduce Symbol, which is the most familiar with our users, with our customers. And the Motorola brand obviously is staying back with Motorola Solutions. It's moving on. Uh, and it, it was really about our customers, CIOs, partners, analysts. They, they recognize the Symbol brand. It seemed the most obvious, most natural brand to go with, Barry. There's a uh, pretty healthy list of accessories that go with this product, and they're very different than consumer products. Uh, tell us a little bit about those. Oh, absolutely. We are proud to offer also a very strong ecosystem of accessories. We have very innovative uh, accessories from charging solutions, uh, back room, front of the room, uh, ways to improve the efficiency of workers. We have the trigger handle coming out in December. We're ex extremely excited about it. You saw it in, on the video. Uh, it's a great time saver. We have audio accessories for voice communications. We have, again, an ecosystem that is unparalleled in the industry, and no consumer company can match that level of commitment to our enterprise customers. And Joe, uh, you know, I've been in this business a long time, and it was always about the keyboard, being able to pound on the keyboard. Do you think enterprise is ready to get naked? I mean, not have a keyboard uh, on this <laughs> device and just go all touch now? Yeah, yeah, I never thought about it that way, but... <laughs> But, you don't do selfies yeah, either. So. No, I don't do <laughs> selfies either. Um, absolutely. You know, I tell you, we, uh, we considered the options of keyboard versus no keyboard. And, and frankly, we've done a lot of studies working with some of our customers around the most rugged keyboard use cases we have in the postal carrier segment. And what we found is in today's day and age, with the amount of smartphones in the marketplace, that Users without a keyboard were 18% more productive using the SIP keyboard. Now, that's standard SIP. We've also been enhancing keyboard capabilities and options on the device. We'll extend the productivity out on top of the device with APIs into the application. The last thing I would say is, if you're building an application today, and everyone moving off of legacy OSs to the Android operating system has to rebuild their app. If they're not building it around touch and being touch-centric, they're missing a huge opportunity to drive productivity right there. Okay. Girish, what is it that makes you most proud about uh, the team effort here on the TC70? You think about all the effort and energy that went into it. You should be giving me questions before these events. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, what makes me the proudest is our team hasn't uh, designed this product, as I said earlier, um, in, uh, in the lab alone, uh, Mike Horan, Leo Greeley, Chris Schoen, other team members here I see, they've spent time in our customers' premises, not in the labs, but out on the, on the shop floor, out in the retail store, out in trucks. And, and that's our, our true north, and that's what makes me the proudest, that this product was cre created with input by our team in our customers' premises. You did pretty well for no prep. That's good. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Got a couple of questions online about mobile device management. Uh, which mobile device management platforms do we support? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. Uh, uh, enterprise uh, is, is, is uh, key for us. And while w one way for IT departments is to fully manage and control the devices they deploy. We believe that provided with enterprise solutions uh, uh, and um, being able to control and manage the devices is key. We have partnered with Sodi 
and AirWatch, two of the, the leading uh, MDM solution providers out there. So out of the box, we will be compatible with those two, Saudi and Enterprise, and AirWatch. Okay. Got a couple of questions about the VoIP capability and the push to talk and comparing it to the MC40. How does the TC70 and the MC40 compare in terms of VoIP capability? Okay, uh, so in terms of VoIP, both w run on wireless LAN, of course, so they are related. However, the output level we get on the TC70 is superior. This is a premium device, premium solution, much louder. Environments like the uh, uh, manufacturing, like we saw in the video, uh, three mic microphones uh, built into the device, solutions, rugged, more, more rugged solutions for audio headsets. So again, we have tiered and, and offer a portfolio to our customers so they can pick and choose the best solution that fit their needs. Okay. All right. Well, that's uh, the time we have today. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here at the TC70 launch event. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.